everyone. I hope you're all keeping well. Um, I've come to talk to you a little bit about uh, my favourite book for as it's Literacy Week this week at Ivydale. And uh, I'm going to cheat slightly. I'm going to do my favourite author. And um, this is my favourite author when I was a child and still now as an adult. And um, my favourite author, and it includes some of my favourite books in here, is Roald Dahl. Um, I think lots of you know about Roald Dahl and know some of the, the books he he's written. And I actually bought this box set as an adult. So it's not something um, from when I was a child. I wanted it even uh, as an adult. And also I thought that hopefully my daughter would like to read some of these when she gets old enough. And actually when I bought that box set, I remembered there were some stories from when I was a child, which, which aren't in here. So I had to hunt down another book. Um, this one, which has seven more short stories of Roald Dahl's. And my favourite one uh, was the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. So if you can track down that story or even this book, um, there's some really good short stories in there. Now, even if you haven't uh, read Roald Dahl's books, you may have come across some of his films. Um, I say his films, films that were made from his books. Um, so Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is now a film uh, from and it's from a book by him. Also, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Matilda, James and the Giant Peach, the BFG. There may be others, I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, he's such a good author that they made lots of his stories into films. But if you have only watched the films, I would encourage you to read the books. Um, they're really, really good. And even if you've watched the film, you will find the books fantastic. He's an excellent author. And because he writes um, for children, the the language and the vocabulary is something that you can magpie. You know, it's you'll be able to understand it and take language from it. And it's really important to read because it links to your writing. So if you want to get better at writing, you need to read. OK, it's like exercise, exercise your writing by reading and you'll get loads of ideas from someone like Roald Dahl. He uses lots of really good descriptions and he uh, uses adjectives and adverbs and so on. Now actually one of the books uh, which I really enjoyed from him wasn't one of his stories, it was a book about his own childhood and it's this one, Boy, uh, Tales of Childhood and it's real, this one's all about his actual childhood and stories from when he was younger and I'm going to read um, a part of this to you and it's a true story as I said um, and it's called it's the great mouse plot that's what the chapter's called okay so I'm going to read it my four friends and I had come across a loose floorboard at the back of the classroom and when we prized it up with the blade of a pocket knife we discovered a big hollow space underneath this, de this we decided would be our secret hiding place for sweets and other small treasures, such as conkers and monkey nuts and bird's eggs. Every afternoon, when the last lesson was over, the five of us would wait until the classroom had emptied, then we would lift up the floorboard and examine our secret hoard, perhaps adding to it or taking something away. One day, when we lifted it up, we found a dead mouse lying among our treasures. It was an exciting discovery. Thwaites took it out by its tail and waved it in front of our faces. What should we do with it? He cried. It stinks, someone shouted. Throw it out of the window, quick. Hold on a tick, I said. Don't throw it away. Thwaites hesitated. They all looked at me. When writing about oneself, one must strive to be truthful. Truth is more important than modesty, I must tell you. Therefore, that it was I, and I alone, who had the idea for the great and daring mouse plot. We all have our moments of brilliance and glory. And this was mine. Why don't we, I said, slip it into one of Mrs Pratchett's jars of sweets. Then when she puts her dirty hand in to grab a handful, she'll grab a stinky dead mouse instead. The other four stared at me in wonder. Then, as the sheer genius of the plot began to sink in, they all started grinning. They slapped me on the back. 
They cheered me and danced around the classroom. We'll do it today, they cried. We'll do it on the way home. You had the idea, they said to me, so you can be the one to put the mouse in the jar. Thwaites handed me the mouse. I put it into my trouser pocket. Then the five of us left the school, crossed the village green and headed for the sweet shop. We were tremendously jazzed up. We felt like a gang of desperados setting out to rob a train or blow up the sheriff's office. Make sure you put it into a jar which is used often, somebody said. I'm putting it in gobstoppers, I said. The gobstopper jar is never behind the counter. I've got a penny, Thwaites said, so I'll ask for one. I'll ask for one sherbet sucker and one bootlace. And while she turns away to get them, you slip the mouse in quickly with the gobstoppers. Thus, everything was arranged. We were strutting a little as we entered the shop. We were the victors now, and Mrs Pratchett was the victim. She stood behind the counter, and her small malignant pig eyes watched us suspiciously as we came forward. One sherbet sucker, please, Thwaites said to her, holding out his penny. I kept to the rear of the group, and when I saw Mrs Pratchett turn her head away for a couple of seconds to fish a sherbet sucker out of the box, I lifted the heavy glass lid of the gobstopper jar and dropped the mouse in. Then I replaced the lid as silently as possible. My heart was thumping like mad and my hands had gone all sweaty. And one bootlace, please, I heard Thwaites saying. When I turned round, I saw Mrs Pratchett holding out the bootlace in her filthy fingers. I don't want all the lot of you trooping in here if only one of you is buying, she screamed at us. Now beat it, get out, go on, get out. As soon as we were outside, we broke into a run. Did you do it? They shouted at me. Of course I did, I said. Well done, you, they cried. What a super show. I felt like a hero. I was a hero. It was marvellous to be so popular. Well, you can, uh, you can, if you've got that book or if you want to get that book, you can read what happens next in the next chapter. But as I said, it's not actually a story. Um, it's, it's a true story. It really happened to Roald Dahl. So you can find out the consequences of the great mouse plot. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoy uh, Literacy Week. Make sure you do lots of reading and maybe try and get some writing done as well. Um, maybe you could try and write your own story in the style of one of the authors uh, you're reading.